Hey guys, what's up? Dave here. And uh, wanted to do a video on five of my favorite art books. So I have a lot of favorites, but here's five of them that I wanted to share with you guys um, that I'm just thrilled to have and I think that they're fantastic. So the first one here is uh, Bruce Timm's Naughty and Nice. And I'm kind of going to try to share what I can with you of this book. I already kind of um, marked it so I don't go overboard because this um, this particular book can be a little tricky to, to make a video of. So I'm going to kind of skip around. We're not going to get to see the whole book, unfortunately, because, um, you know, Bruce Tim does a lot of pinups and they're not all, you know, appropriate to show. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to Let's dive into this and, and get to the uh, first round of, uh, of illustrations here. So this is awesome, cool vampire illustration. These look like they're from movies and I'm not exactly sure what movies they're from, but you know, definitely some classic vampire stuff going on here. This is a beautiful illustration right here well painted by Bruce Tim, and looks like some hammer uh, horror film illustrations going on here love this one with Frankenstein just busting through this glass right here or maybe this is ice maybe you know maybe he was frozen in ice and he's busting out of the ice some zombies or Frankensteins, which technically Frankenstein is probably a zombie, so no worries there. So you get to see Bruce Timm's um, inked artwork here and then his full color painted illustrations here on the right. And wow, beautiful. This is, would love to have this Frankenstein, Dracula. That'd be awesome. The Bride of Frankenstein. Now these look like some uh, homage, homages to like creepy magazine. Was there another one called Fear? Maybe, but um, looks like that style, old like Frank Frazetta style covers. And uh, here's an illustration with a girl with a robot. I don't know if that's to anything specific or that's just something Bruce Tim, you know, made up himself. But anyway, awesome illustration. And then Deadlier Than the Male, we skipped over. And you know, we've got a lot of girls with guns here. Uh, still pinups. Um, this was to a comic book. Something having to do with, uh, with the Bible, I think. But uh, anyway, this is an awesome illustration. You have this girl in this um, kind of American flag motif shooting at Nazis down here. And another girl over here kind of in a um, like Prince Namor motif here. So you're getting kind of the feeling of the invaders going on here because you have this kind of devil character here that could be the human torch. So see what he did there. Very cool. Some more pinups, you know, very James Bond ish esque. Barbarella esque here, you know, female warrior in outer space. Some more. Some Western uh, characters. I think this was actually from a comic book and I think Bruce Tim may have done some covers for that comic book. Um, definitely a Lone Ranger style character but you know in the female form. Bruce Tim definitely seems like he's a, a fan of, of the old serials. I guess those would be from like the 30s and 40s, if I'm correct, if I'm guessing correctly here. So we're gonna we're, we're gonna flip over again 
to another section called Avenging Angels. And you see Catwoman here. And you're gonna see, you know, a lot of great um, DC characters in this section. Harlequin, uh, Catwoman, Ivy, Batgirl. Man, his illustrations are amazing. Big Barda. Man, I don't know what's cooler you know, the inks or the full painted illustration. Both pretty badass. Huntress, one of my favorite characters, and he did an awesome job on Huntress. Power Girl over here. One of the Furies from Apocalypse's World. Um, another Catwoman. Harley Ivy. This is a great Power Girl illustration. Um, and I would almost say that I like the inks better than the colors, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's larger on the page here and that's why I'm like really drawn to it. Whereas this one's tighter in the center. And then from the Marvel family here, another big Barda, Ivy. Supergirl, the little blonde Supergirl that, you know, they had in this white costume with the mini skirt for a while. I want to say 90s, 90s Supergirl. Harley again, Catwoman, Batgirl, and Ivy. Zatanna, another one of my favorite characters. Really loves to draw uh, Power Girl, I see, and obviously Ivy and Harley like a big subject matter for uh, Bruce Tim. Batwoman has beautiful illustration. Another Z Zatanna. Big Barda again. He's like rotating those characters. You know, a little sexy um, Harley. And I'm not sure of the name of this character. I know she's part of the Captain Marvel family, but I'm not sure which character if she's you know, part of like Black Adam's uh, family or Captain Marvel's family. So she's all in black, so I'm not really sure. But anyway. Black Canary. This is gorgeous in color right here. Another big Barda. And if, uh, if you know anything about uh, you know, the characters that Jack Kirby had uh, uh, um, created called the New Gods. Big Barda was Mr. Miracle's wife. Another Harley and Ivy. And I think that's all I'm showing you guys of this book. Yeah, I think that's all. That's as far as I'm going on that. So very cool. Now, another one of my favorite books is uh, this one here and it's Go Nagai Artworks. And Go Nagai is one of my favorite Japanese um, animators. And if you guys don't know Go Nagai, he is the creator of Mazinga Z. So I was lucky enough to meet him last year at, uh, at the anime convention at uh, the Los Angeles Convention Center. So I got his autograph and a bunch of other stuff, some buttons and posters and t-shirts and a bunch of stuff. So anyway, let's dip right into to his book. So I think it's pretty fantastic. And some of these books, like like Go Guy's book too, is, is gonna be a little tricky to show all of it, but... I think for, for the most part, it's, it's going to be okay. Hopefully. Now you see a lot of his illustrations and a lot of them are kind of cartoony. And they definitely have, he's, he has like a dark tone to his artwork. You know, and probably to him, to, to to himself as well, because if if you know Devil Man, um, that was a pretty graphic anime. So, and Gonagai is the creator of Devil Man, 
as well as Mazinga Z. So you can see the artwork, it's very vintage looking. It has like a very 70s look to it. And it has, you know, a lot of uh, science fiction, sci-fi aspects to the artwork. Also, if you know Cutie Honey, that's another character of Gona Guys. Some Devil Man artwork. Some with Mazinga Z. I'm not sure who this character is. I don't know all of his characters, but. I do know quite a few, actually. One of the Mazinga Z spin-off characters. He had so many, you know, like Mazinga Z, and then there was uh, Great Mazinga, and then, you know, they just they just continued in their grandness, so. But his illustrations are, are epic, you know? Here's Mazinga Z, Great Mazinga, and, um, ah, can't remember his name right now. Grandizer, Grandizer, yeah. Also a very cool anime. And the, the characters cross over, and there's actually, you know, if you've seen any of the animated movies, they use a lot of the characters together in the anime, so you get to see a lot of them interact together. There's Koji Kabuto with Sanyaka and Mazinga Z there in the background. If, if you don't know, um, Koji is the pilot to Mazinga Z. Some of the cutie honey characters and um, you know like I said Gonagai can be just a little a little risque and and dark so cutie honey characters here and here and if you're not familiar with cutie honey characters she's this um, this one particular character that can change into, I think, like four other characters, depending on her situation that she needs to get out of. And then Devil Man here. This is the band that goes around the book. I just put it inside the book so it doesn't get damaged. This is awesome. You know, his artwork is like, I mean, I mean it's, it's like more than, than pinups and whatnot. It's, it's well painted, you know, a lot of the pieces are on canvas, you know, ready to, to hang on your wall and whatnot. So he's kind of like in between, you know, like a fine artist and, you know, a anime or manga artist, so. Yeah, I wouldn't say any of his of his artwork is explicit, but it's more, you know, it's more uh, like up to your own interpretation and and what he's doing with that particular piece of art, you know, and the mood that he has and 
you know, the story that he's trying to convey and the mood of, of the Devil Man character sitting here kind of contemplating something with this huge moon in the background and this other guy sitting here in the front. I think that guy's name is Dante. Is it Dante? It looks like he did this with color pencils or crayons or something. It looks like it needs to be inked, but you know, it's going a guy, man. I'm not gonna judge it. So that was it for Gona Guy's book. Another one of my all time favorite books. And that goes back in the slip case. If I can get it back in there. There we go. So there's that. And then the next book is the uh, Jamie Hewlett book. And if you're not familiar with Jamie Hewlett, he is the artist on the Tank Girl comic book, or was, and uh, also is the character designer for the Gorillas, the the Gorillas, the band, the Gorillas, and um, you know the animated um, music videos. Let me just move Bruce Tim's book out of the way a little bit there, so I don't damage it. And someone gave me this nifty K-Rock sticker here that has the gorillas depicted in the letters of K-R-O-Q. So I always just keep that in the book here. So again, with this book, you know, keep in mind these are illustrations, it's artwork, but you know, we're probably gonna run into some of the same situations where we're going to have some minor explicit content so but anyway this is an awesome book super cool illustrations in this book i love his graphic style you know he's got this this cool pop art slash animated style to his artwork so look at this this is gorgeous just the shadows on the on the face of the character just make it pop out like in a like three-dimensional kind of way this puffy eye over here that looks like it's gotten beaten looks like it's protruding from the book itself so that's why it's one of my favorite books So some of the, I believe maybe the original artwork from Tank Girl, uh, the Tank Girl comic book. But I'll just skim through that kind of fast because that can get tricky. This is pretty cool, this one too. Now he does put a lot of symbolism into his artwork and you know I can't say I, I agree with it a hundred percent I do like his illustrations but you know there's de definitely some um, hidden messages in his artwork for example the number 23 you'll see on a lot of the characters like whether it's a patch on a jacket um, or you know on the side of a race car or something like that and the number 23 is associated with um, like unfortunate events so and then I feel like he kind of you know he dips into you know a little bit of the satanic side there here and there And that's not something I can agree with either, so. You gotta watch out with this artwork because there's stuff kind of floating around here that I can't really show you guys. But so here's the gorillas. And you know, you'll also see uh, this particular character here depicted as uh, in a Nazi uniform as well. So 
that's something that's questionable. And here you have Noodle. Noodle's a pretty cool character. And you know, you have this photograph here of this person, this character on a big wheel or big wheel style um, bike here, which I remember from you know being a little kid, we used to ride bikes like that. I don't know if you can call them bikes, I mean basically for little kids. But the artwork is amazing. It's a it's intense, it's uh, very animated, it's cool, it's fun. It's hip, you know, it has this 60s kind of groovy style to it, you know, that he likes and I like as well. So this is awesome, you know, just taking this photograph of this building in the city here and then illustrating your characters over it, you know, that's, that's just a super cool effect. So here you see the an illustration of the gorillas and you have this character here and he's wearing like a, a cross or maybe an upside down cross but this statue in the background if you've ever seen the exorcist movie that was the statue from that movie and the demon uh, from that movie so you know he's got kind of like a little obsession with whatever's going on with that so you see here you see the number 23 These are cool illustrations. Kids. Dirty Harry is um, one of the songs from the gorillas. This is awesome. He's eating noodles, but it's really like stereo components and, and wires and whatnot. Tokyo Storm Warning. And I'm assuming this is Noodle. Let's see right here, you have this one character and he's wearing a helmet, it's like a Nazi helmet. And then this guy's wearing an upside down cross over here. This is just garbage, look, garbage. And it's such a beautiful illustration. It's like, wow. This reminds me of Rosemary's Baby. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie. Maybe that was his intent. Wow, this is awesome. You know, very reminiscent of um, Ghost in the Shell here, this illustration. If you're familiar with the Ghost in the Shell uh, anime. That's what I'm talking about. See, it's just, just very 60s, 70s style apparel on his characters, and I, I really dig that. He's got a picture of uh, Hunky Dory by David Bowie, uh, one of David Bowie's albums here, which is a really great album, by the way. I don't know if these are storyboards. Maybe they're storyboards for one of the videos. But if they are storyboards, I mean, they're very tightly illustrated. It's a lot of detail. So there'd be some amazing storyboards. Or maybe it's a comic book that just never, you know, happened. Or maybe it happened and I don't know about it. I would like to have it if it did happen. Well, wow, check this out. You got all these guys in hoods and stuff like that. You know, something very extreme going on here in this illustration. And then back to the, the gorillas. Wow, this is really cool. You've got like this Frankenstein Elvis Presley character. And that looks like uh, maybe Johnny Rotten back there. I'm not sure who that is. Um, Jimi Hendrix back here, 
this could possibly be is it Davy Jones was that his name from um, the Rolling Stones one of the original members who I believe maybe drowned he OD'd and maybe drowned um, in the early days of the Rolling Stones could be Oh, these are very cool. I mean, I've got a huge collection of art books and, you know, I'm just trying to get around to showing them all to you guys and sharing, sharing them with you guys one by one. And I'll probably do another another favorite um, art book video again. But I wanted to start with five, and, and five is plenty, I think. So you got this goat head person right here. This is an awesome illustration. I've got a couple of more books for you guys, so I'm just gonna kind of flip randomly through the rest of this book. Oh, these, these are cool. So I'm gonna show you these. They kind of have these, I don't know if I'd call them laminates. They almost look like tracing paper that's illustrated on. And they look really cool. It's a super cool effect. Playing a sitar here. I don't know what the deal is with these illustrations, but it's a super cool, you know, little insert at the back of the book. Extra, you know, almost feels like behind the scenes type of stuff. And I really appreciate stuff like that, so. All right, so anyway. Let's go on to our next book. Awesome back cover too. And this one is a Haruhiko Mikimoto illustration book. And this is another one of my favorite books. And if you've ever seen Robotech or Macross, this is a character designer um, to that uh, anime. So also, in addition to that, he also did the character illustrations um, for Gunbusters and Megazone 2-3. So if you recognize his artwork, then it's probably from one of those animes. So let's just dip right into it. And he's, he's well known for these doughy eyes that he illustrates on the, the female characters. And they're just really beautiful. And every time I look at his artwork, I'm just blown away and inspired. You know, obviously he has an 80s style because the animes that he worked on were from the 80s. So he's got this retro style to his artwork. These illustrations were from Orgus. It's an anime called Orgus. I've never seen it. I've, I've seen a dub of it, I think on YouTube. It wasn't very good. Um, a lot of times a bad dub can mess up an anime. So I would probably rather see either a, a current redub or the original Japanese version with subtitles probably be better. And then you have a illustration of Gunbusters here. It's also an awesome um, series, anime series, OVA. Some Megazone 2-3 Eve illustrations.
I highly recommend, if you haven't seen Megazone 2-3, that you watch that anime. And it's a movie, so... There's three movies, actually, in the series, and the first movie is the best one, in my opinion. A lot of people say the uh, second movie's pretty good, too. I just don't remember that much about it. And then this, this work here, I'm not familiar with. But he does a lot of these, a lot of these uh, illustrations of females. And I don't know if they're supposed to be specific characters, like some of these, like this one here looks like Min Mei from uh, Robotech or Macross. And this one looks just like, you know, an original character that he's come up with. Gundam. Some more Gundam. Whoa. Skipped ahead there. Sorry. Oh, these are beautiful illustrations. Look at this here. This was to the uh, Robotech this was like a convention, I think, I had went to at one time. It didn't come with this book. I think I just randomly stuck it in here or something. Sometimes when people give me things or I stop at somebody's booth or something like that, you know, I get a postcard or something, I don't know what to do with it, so. Ends up in a book somewhere. This is beautiful. So you, you have the Macross characters here, you know, Min Mei and Rick, Lisa here, and then you have the Macross 2 characters on the right side. I'd like to see that again. It's been a while since I've seen that. And, you know, the original Macross series was very memorable to me. And even though it's probably been longer since I've seen that, I don't really remember much about Macross 2. So some inked illustrations really awesome some model sheet work here thumbnails last gunbuster illustration and that's it okay so the book that I saved for last was the Dave Stevens book covers and stories because I really like the way that this book is laid out and I was lucky enough to get some signatures from Dave Stevens before he died um, at a convention but when I talk about art books this is kind of what I'm talking about you know in terms of the way it's laid out because this book it has pencils inks and then you'll get like the the finished product as well so here are some covers of some of the comic books that dave stevens worked on this is another cover i think i actually have those too but look i mean you see all the layouts here that he did in the blue pencil and then you see the full uh inked illustration here and i love the 80s you know style that he had was well, his 1983 so he was just doing a contemporary style at that time but look the little headband on the girl here and the little sleeveless vests and stuff like that it's super cool you know the high boots surprised they don't have leg warmers on but see you get you get that um, preliminary sketch that he does you know the the tight thumbnail that he does and then you get the actual inks for the cover of this Sheena Queen of the Jungle 3D issue number four right there two dollars so 1984 yes I'll take it see that see you see what he's messing around with here he's like okay this concept she's got the knife she's crouched down she's you know she's on the tree branch here and then he's like nope we're gonna do it this way so scrap that idea 
and then you get like this close-up of the illustration you know it's not the full illustration because it's kind of cropped but you're like okay this is cool yeah I see and then you're like BAM and you get this total like close-up of the artwork and you can really appreciate it Crossfire now I've never seen this comic book I don't know if he did the cover or if he did the interior as well but you can see he played with a couple of different concepts for the cover here and then decided on this that's 1985 it says Mark uh, Evanier and uh, Dan Spiegel so I'm guessing that Dave just did the cover DN agents and 1985 yeah very 1980s looking for sure crossfire rainbow Elvis and if you knew anything about Dave Stevens like he was very much into this you know, the 50s scene and whatnot like you know he was very much into Bet Betty Page and I think he was a, a good friend of Betty Page's and fought for a lot of her merchandising rights and whatnot so you can see a lot of like vintage retro style in his artwork even though a lot of it what I mean it's in the 80s so a lot of it is you know retro there but when I say retro I'm talking about like 50s 40s you know 60s so you get this cool illustration of this witch and if you just pick up the illustration it's totally black and white right here but when you put it down you can see the full colors so it's pretty cool little uh, layover effect here and here this is just the color so if you see the colors without the inks it's like very you know it's monotone looking and then you throw the inks on top of that and it's like amazing so that's a fun little effect that they put inside the book I really appreciate that another um, one night only farewell performance and you can see the breakdowns of how he wanted to do the cover and the different ideas came up with like three four ideas in thumbnails and then he fleshed out like a larger idea here and then he went with it and then totally you know like fleshed it out and detailed it and that's that's the process man you know you see the same thing here he's like I got her here and there's this big spider and then you know he kind of breaks it down and, and decides on this this woman with this snake kind of wrapped around her and, and these uh, skeleton warriors in the background they're holding this guy back with the spear and he looks like pretty pretty uh, dangerous but uh, if I'm reading this illustration correctly it looks like he's probably going to try to help her and they're not gonna let him so you see that I mean there was a whole story just to that that cover right there and it says the world of wood so I'm assuming that they are referring to Wally Wood and if you're familiar with Wally Wood's uh, artwork it's amazing and his stories are amazing he's got a lot of sci-fi and horror stuff that's just super cool but I think I tried to get a copy of one of these comics at one time like on eBay or something and you know it just didn't come or something I wasn't able to get it for some reason I think they emailed me and said oh you know it was torn sorry you know we can't send it to you and I was like oh that's kind of kind of weird and then Airboy I actually have this comic and you know definitely just bought it for the Dave Stevens cover because this is awesome you got Valkyrie here and Airboy down here at the bottom but this was a a reboot of a Golden Age comic book I believe Johnny Quest and that's a beautiful cover you see how he broke it down here again and this is what I'm talking about when I say art book like this is an art book it's not just illustrations in the book it's basically going into you know in depth into the artist's uh, work and how the artist created his or her work so this looks like Joan Jett like Joan Jett and the Black Hearts and, and this like punk you know zombie looking dude Planet Comics 
you know planet comics it's actually like a golden age comic book maybe they did a revive of it at some point you know more thumbnail sketches But if you haven't seen Dave Stevens work or you know you didn't really know much about him he's just a fantastic artist he's like the perfect blend of like contemporary and uh, and vintage artwork so he's got a illustration here of Betty Page Vampirella look at that blown up for you intense artwork you go from like this kind of animated comic style here to a fully painted rendition of Vampirella. It's amazing. Looks like a, you know, right out of a page from Frank Frazetta's book. Madman, the Shadow. Betty Page again. I collected all of these comic books that uh, Dave Stevens did. Um, he did it with another illustrator. I'm not sure if it's if it's noted here, but hopefully it'll say because I can't remember his name right now. Oh, that's disappointing. Oh well. Wow, look at this. We got a Jack Kirby illustration here uh, from the Jack Kirby collector uh, number 22. This is a beautiful picture with Dr. Doom and Silver Surfer. And what I think Dave Stevens did here was I think inked over um, Kirby's pencils. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Jim Silk. That's who it was, Jim Silk. They did the uh, Betty Page comic together. Dave Stevens and Jim Silk. <clears throat> you can see uh, Jim Silk's work right here. And I love his illustrations. And then it looks like Dave Steven uh, inked over Jim Silk's artwork. Cosmo Cat. So, comic book of Cosmo Cat. I've never heard of Cosmo Cat, so I've only seen it in this book here. And I didn't, I haven't read the strip. My Greatest Adventure Shadow in the, oh, Showdown in the Sewer. Look at this, Tarzan. I mean, I think if, if you find any comic books that Dave Stevens did the interior as well as the um, the cover then pick it up absolutely and you know you can see that you know he's done obviously the Rocketeer and that's a fantastic comic book I mean there's a there's a special edition uh, slipcase version of that that I own that is just gorgeous and it has a lot of extras in the back sketches and stuff like that it's, it's perfect some sci-fi Dave Stevens stuff. You know, sometimes he's inking, sometimes he's illustrating, so. But it's always all good. Princess Pam. You've got Marilyn Monroe here. I don't know what this, uh, what this comic book's about, but if I can get my hands on it, I'm definitely going to. The Herculoids from Hanna-Barbera. Some more Betty Page. Betty Page pinup. Oh, look at that. Super cool. Wow, this is such a tight pencil of Betty Page. It's just gorgeous the way it is. You know, and then you see it fully painted here. 
I almost like the, the pencils better than, than the fully painted uh, version of it, although the fully painted version of it is amazing as well. But I mean, you just really get that, that shading and, you know, it, it almost looks like if you touch it, it's soft, you know? It's crazy. Phantom Lady, Betty Page, and then the full color illustration of Betty Page. You know, it's funny that a lot of his artwork is from the 80s because the 80s was was really an appreciation of the 50s. And he really, you can really tell that he loves the 50s and the pinup era and whatnot. So I think this is another um, Dave Stevens inks over Jack Kirby's work and it's gorgeous. The Hulk. Captain America, Doctor Strange, Daredevil, Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch, and um, what the heck was his name? Quicksilver. The X-Men, Magneto, Hellboy, Captain Marvel. These are like early illustrations, like 1974 from Dave Stevens. This is awesome. Obviously Dave Stevens was a big fan of uh, Jack Kirby, as am I. Betty again. Oh, this is cool. I think this was a magnet set that was out at, at one time where you could just, you, you know, you use the Betty Page character and then you can put all these different accessories and dresses and whatnot on her. I can't remember seeing that, you know, inside the store at one time. And then a picture of Dave Stevens. Too bad he's not around anymore because he is an amazing illustrator. But anyway, that's five of my favorites. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time.